that was holy and pure because tonight so father let go of the past the questions what they did to you even your ungodly response leave it leave it say forgive me lord i'm not going to miss this moment i don't want anybody in this room to miss this moment if you want more the power of god is here if you want more the power of god is here for come on up come on up say jesus jesus i love you jesus i commit my life to you jesus again and again and again lord yeah go ahead you keep on he's hearing your hearts cry right now the bible says when we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness he doesn't just forgive he cleanses father yes father I thank you for the heartfelt repentance. I thank you that she's committed her life to you and she's spoken that, verbalized that. Now, baptize her in the Holy Ghost with the power of God that she will know what she is to do. The calling of God upon her life, fill her with the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Even with speaking in tongues, uh, let the tongue be loosed over her. Lord God, I thank you for releasing the tongue, her heavenly language, her spiritual language, her heavenly language. Go ahead, start praying as the Spirit of the living God directs you, not in English, not in a foreign language, but the language of heaven. Let it flow. He will lead you. He will put it on your mouth. He is leading you right now. Open your mouth. Let the tongue of the Lord be released through you now. That's okay. That's okay. We got somebody behind you. This is all brand new for her, apparently. So let the power of the Holy Spirit. This is God's. This is God's Holy Spirit. Look. Look at me. Look at me, honey. This is the power of God's Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit came upon the people in the Book of Acts, it was a crazy, radical moment. People were speaking in in different tongues. The fire, literal tongues of fire, was upon each head. I don't think they were standing so tall, and I think some of them were falling over. It was crazy. It was a radical moment that God is doing for you right now, probably what you've been asking for for a long time. I don't know. I've never met you, but I do know one thing. There's such hunger in your eyes. You've been seeking. You've been seeking, and God says, today, tonight is the night. Today, you just said yes to him. Was that for the first time, or is that a recommitment? A recommitment. So, Father... Bless her with the knowing of what you have called her to do, who you've called her to be. Baptize her in the Holy Ghost. There it is, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, come on, if that was you, if that was your son, your daughter, if that was someone you love, they just recommitted their life, they got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit overwhelmed her. Oh, you overwhelmed her. Glory, glory, glory. Now open up her ears, oh God, that she will hear the call of God. Open up her ears, oh God, open up her eyes, oh God that she will hear the call of God. I, I speak clarity over your mind. I speak clarity over your heart. That the love of God overwhelms you and totally, totally transforms you. That you know that you're called, anointed and appointed for such a time. Such a time as this, wow. For such a time as this, you've been called and you've been appointed by God Wow, 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 for such a time, such a time. Thank you, Lord, for what you just did. You, my goodness, my goodness. 
and hell just lost another one. Because when we get baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's not just a, I know Jesus. It's, I live for you, Jesus. And there's a difference between I know you and I live for you. There's a difference between I know and I live. We're going to live for him. We don't just want to know. We want to live for him. Woo. Okay, I'm going to have you guys come and take a step closer, those that are here. That are still standing, that is. Because I haven't gone through and prayed for you all yet. I'm going to need some extra help. You stand behind. Yeah. There you go. Stand behind that man of God. Hallelujah. Do you want to go stand behind um, Aaron? Glory and glory. You can stand behind this one here. Lift your hands up before the Lord, all three of you. I mean, everybody can, but right now, all three of you. And maybe take a step, a little step closer this way, this way. Can you come over here on the carpet? Because, yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. Father, baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Power, 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 the power of God, the power of God upon your life. Baptism of the Holy Spirit with the fire of God all through him, flowing through him again and again and again. Receive it now. All. 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 Deeper. 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 Deeper, Spirit of the living God's going deeper, 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 deeper. Woo, Yes, let him give him your all. There you go. Your all, your all, your all. Your all, your all. So the other catchers, please stand behind someone in the crowd there. Wow. Every place of unbelief, go right now. Every place of unbelief, I command it to go right now. I rebuke that spirit. Look at me. Every place of disappointment leaves right now. All of it. All. The fire of the Lord. Baptize. Baptize. The fire of God's, whoa, Holy Spirit. It's baptizing you right now. Uh, come on this way. Let's just come stand over here. Can some of you come stand on the carpet? It would make more room. That would be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. Um, we need someone. Right here. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, be healed in the name of Jesus. Does anybody here need healing in their body? Wave your hand. Come on up. Tell me what you need healing for. Head injuries. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you right here. <laughs> Cute. They all went in a circle. <laughs> Hallelujah. So did you have an accident? long time ago? How would you know if God heals you tonight? How would you know? You have to go and check or would you know? You would know. Okay. So how would you know? Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to, um, we're, I'm going to have you hold this. I'm going to pray for her. If we could put the music a little louder. Father, I thank you, Lord. You said in your word, Lord God, you said in your word, Father, we lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Now I lay my hands upon her brain and I decree 100% complete healing over her right now. I take authority over the brain injuries, uh, over the concussions. I take authority right now over every demonic assignment that's come against her to kill, to steal, to destroy. 
and I command this brain to come to alignment, to be healed, be healed, be healed right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, whoo, the fire of God to destroy every demonic assignment, every curse, every curse of death, every curse of death in your life right now, I take authority over it, go, go. Let the glory of God right now, let his fire continue. Let the presence of God continue for what he is doing. Yes, Abba. Total and complete restoration over her brain, Father. We thank you for that, Lord God. By the, in the name of Jesus, by the stripes that you bore on your body, Father God, we decree she is healed. Her brain is functioning 100% perfectly. 100%, no more pain, no more weird noises. Break every curse off your life, woman of God. Every curse be broken and be removed. Stripped of power. Every generational curse be stripped of power right now. Wow. Jesus. I'm going to let the Lord finish to minister to you. You can stay right where you're at. You don't have to move. Stay right where you're at. Let God finish. So I know he's doing something. We're going to let God finish. Wow. Just lift your hands. Is there anybody else with pain or they have something they need prayer for? Hi. Your mom? This is your mom. We've been praying for you, mama. You're welcome. Just lift your hands up before the Lord. I decree over you God's divine healing. And I take authority over every curse, every disease uh, be removed uh, from this body right now. Shrivel up and die and do not return. Life abundantly is what we decree over you right now. Spirit of death, leave her. Leave, leave, wow, leave. Spirit of death, go right now. Eradicate from this body completely, completely. There it is. There it is. Completely. Wow. Let it go. Let it go. All of it. All of it. Let it go. All. Wow. There you go. Woo. Ah, but we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let's praise him for a moment, Church of God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. How can I pray for you? Diabetes. Okay. You don't want the insulin. Okay. Okay, come stand right here, maybe. Abba, you heard? The doctors claimed diabetes. She says no. Doesn't want it. We cancel it right now. I decree over your body. The strength of God right now, starting to go through every system and every organ, every system and every organ right now. Diabetes, you are a thing of the past. I command you to leave her body right now. Out in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be healed, restored, restored 100%. I thank you, Lord, every system, every organ in her body, be healed. Who else is here for healing? Okay. Wow. Okay. And I, I went to my neurologist last week, and I told her, there, uh, you get triggers with this. It's called a suicide pain, because a lot of people commit suicide from it. And I get a trigger from warm, warm, warm water, and it'll just tighten the side of my face. And right now, I can't smile. And but I don't want this pain to come and, and stay because I had my women of God, my women of God group pray for me and the pain, it doesn't stay. It comes and goes every couple, once in a while. So I give God that glory because normally it would, it would stay every day throughout the whole day, but God has been good. Amen. So I think. So she says Bell's palsy. Okay. About a year ago, right? What's your name? Cindy. Father, I lift my, lay my hands upon Sid, Sydney right now. 
Cindy, I decree over you right now, Bell Paul's no more. I take authority over that curse, that sickness, and that disease. And I speak to your nervous system right now to be healed and to be restored right now. Every nerve in this body right now. I take authority right now over the assignment of the enemy. And I cancel it right now. Spirit of death, I cancel you right now. Spirit of suicide, go! I cancel you right now. Every tormentor, I command you to go. Every assignment from the pit, generational assignment, every curse from your family bloodline, I command it to go right now. Right now in Jesus' name. You hold this for a second. So you said that you would know if God healed you. Amen? Yes? And, and right now you said you feel pretty good. Praise God. It feels better. Okay, let's stand up. Praise God. Let's give God the glory for that. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to pray again. I'm glad that it feels better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray another time. specific we're praying about okay okay so all the fear I command fear to go I want you to say I renounce the spirit of fear I want nothing to do with it I separate myself from all assignments of fear fear lever right now I command all anxiety lever right now stomach in the stomach over her skin I command it to leave and I thank you for strengthening her and healing her right now let the love of God now fill her the love of God fill her, Lord God. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless her, Lord. Fill her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Wow. <laughs> More, Lord. Wow. Yes. Come on, woman of God. That's right. Hallelujah. She just got baptized. She committed her life to the Lord, got baptized, and she's extending her hand, helping us. Praise God. Praise God. That's how we all need to be, right? Father, more for Bobby. Lord, more for Bobby. Yeah. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. More saturator in the love of God, Father God. Saturator in the love of God, Father God. Yes, Father. Glory to God. Come on up, you two. Come stand over here. Oh, no, 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 And what was your name? Jose. Jose. Okay. We're going to move that way. All right. All right, Jose. Uh, what do you need to repent of? What do you need to renounce? Okay. So re repent of anything you're involved in that would bring this and renounce. Ask the Lord to show you what have you done to bring it. I renounce frustration, anger. I renounce fear, idolatry, rebellion towards God, 
generational curses of rebellion towards God. I renounce. I come out of agreement. Is your gaming, a lot of gaming in your life? Mm-hmm. Like Warcraft, that kind of stuff? Okay, so it's witchcraft. Do you know that? It's deceptive. It's seducing your mind, and it's limiting you. Basically, it's numbing you to the truth. It's a portal to the enemy. It becomes, you become a slave to the enemy because your eyes become dulled and hazed with that seduction. Is this making any sense? I take authority over what's vague for you right now. I command every spirit of, every stupid spirit right now to leave him in the name of Jesus. I command every scale to come off his eyes right now and off his ears right now. Every deaf and dumb spirit to leave him right now. In the name of Jesus. All the time wasted gaming becomes like an idolatry. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so I want you to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me for wasting time and for bringing into my life something that's going to seduce me into inactivity. It numbs you. That's what it does. But there's a reason that you went to it. What's the pain? What happened? Yep. Why are you shut down? Ask the Holy Spirit right now. Are you saved? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Okay, well, you don't have to hope so. Right now, that's where we're going to start. Okay? We're going to know so. Okay? Your life is too important with just a hope so. You came here tonight. The Holy Spirit drew you here tonight. Even if your friend invited you, you still said yes. Right? Tonight is an opportunity for you to realize that you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's why some of the things I was talking about made no sense. Because your spirit needs to be born anew. So Jesus is God. He is Lord. God sent his son to die on the cross for us. To take all of our penalties upon him. Because there was no other way for God to reconcile man to himself. Because of sin, it separated us from God for eternity. And the only way to bridge that gap was for Jesus, which is fully God, to come to earth, to walk amongst us, knowing he was going to die, and willingly went to the cross, took all of our sins, past, present, and future, upon himself. The ultimate sacrifice, the only way that this could happen. And he said yes, and he took that penalty upon himself. And when he died, he didn't stay dead. He rose. He rose again as the plan of God would have it. And when he rose again, he left us his Holy Spirit. And he said, for all that will come to me, I will accept them as my sons. Tonight is an invitation for you to say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I realize you paid the price already. And I can't pay it on my own. There's no way. The Bible says we cannot earn our way to salvation. It's simply just having faith in what Jesus did for us. This simple yes that I'm going to ask you to make in a moment will literally change the course of your whole life. You will go as a man that wasn't sure if he was saved and wasn't sure where he was going to go when he dies to a man that can know 100% because of the, the Jesus did on the cross for you and your yes to him. You will know 100% when you die, you'll be able to go to heaven forever with him. But not only that, he'll live with you and he'll give you strength and he'll give you wisdom and he's going to show you the way to go and he's going to heal your heart, your mind. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to say yes to this precious, precious gift, which is free but cost Jesus everything. You, But it's really just a heartfelt prayer. It's a heartfelt prayer. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes right now. And you're going, to, you're going to pray to the Heavenly Father. You're going to ask 
You're going to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Okay, let's start. Go ahead and close your eyes and let's start praying. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I come to you now and I ask you to receive me as your son. I commit my life into your hands, Jesus. I renounce and I turn away from any and all idolatry and other gods. And, and I decree, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Your word says no man comes to the Father except through you. The word of God says no man comes to the Father, the Heavenly Father, except through Jesus. So today, I give myself to you, Jesus. Come, be my Lord. Come, be my Savior. Go ahead and say that. Come be my Lord. Come be my Savior. Father, he's just accepted you as his Lord and Savior right now. And all of heaven is rejoicing. All of heaven, the angels of heaven right now are rejoicing for this son that did not know you, but now, Lord, has made a commitment to you, Father. I thank you, hell just lost another one. Now, Father, baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Baptize in the Holy Ghost. Let the tongue now start to be loose. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, let the tongue be loosed. Let the tongue be loosed. Yeah, there it is, start to rise up within him. Let the tongue be loosed. The spiritual gift that I'm referring to right now, Jose, is God's prayer language. You hear us talking in a tongue that is not English, but it is a heavenly language that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you as you're yielded to him right now, the sweet presence of God is all over you, man of God. So I can call you a man of God because now you are. Your whole destiny just changed. Now I take authority over every veil and every scheme of the enemy. Every demonic assignment, every tormentor, everything that comes from the pit. I rebuke you and I command you to get off of him now. Loosen from his mind. Loosen from his heart. Loosen from his memories. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you that the blood of Jesus washes over you, over your generations, washes you clean, a clean slate. There is a clean slate over you, Jose. A clean slate over you, Jose. Glory, 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 glory. Jose, can you skip? Let's get him back up. So I know all this is new, or at least I'm assuming it's all new since you just received the Lord. That's the power of God that came on you. The power of God. See, his, his power is far beyond anything the world can offer you, and it's certainly far beyond anything the enemy has. You've just today made a choice to enter into a holy walk with God. Everything is going to change from this point forward as you commit yourself to live for him. You're going to read your word, the Bible. If you don't have one, we'll make sure you get one to live according to the word, to stay in fellowship, to come and start to grow. It's time to grow. You have to grow. Because we don't want the enemy to come and to play with your mind and tell you lies. So it's important that you plant yourself in a church. You're welcome to come here to grow. There'll be men that are going to reach out to you, to take you in, to help you, to speak life, identity over you, to help you really to raise up and be a godly man strong that knows the word that's what your future has and from there everything 
everything is beautiful because God will make it all beautiful. So right now, I'm going to ask the power of the Holy Spirit to loosen your mouth and for the tongue to come forth. It's not something you think of. It's something you let them do. You yield. You just yield. And even as you, as the power of God came upon you and you fell, it's the same way. Just be yielded and let him do what he wants. But you have to open your mouth and you have to let him speak through you. Amen? He'll help you. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, fill them now with the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the tongue be loosed right now. I thank you, Father. As the tongue is loosed right now. Father, I thank you for showing him, Lord God, your power and your love. Here he goes again. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Father, loosen his tongue. Start to pray. Start to pray. Let him. Say, Holy Spirit, speak through me. You tell him that. Holy Spirit, there you go. Speak through me. There you go. Now let him. Whatever he, whatever you feel like he's doing, just do it. Just don't block him, basically, okay? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. I see it. It's right there. Everybody else be praying in tongues. Yep, there you go. Keep going, keep going. I come against that spirit of resistance. Tongue be loosed. There it is. There it is. More. More. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You got to get louder. I want you to hear yourself. It's not going to sound like mine. It's going to be your own. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Loosen this tongue. Go. Can you listen? Because I can't really hear. I see his mouth moving. Can you listen to see? He, your friend, Raul, is going to listen. We want to hear. So go get louder. He's going to listen. He's your friend. He can do that. Yeah, let it flow. Let it flow. This is the Holy Spirit, and he wants to empower you. Keep going. His mouth is moving. I just You just need to get your ear to his mouth so he can hear. more he has it more 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 i want you to listen to it okay raul tell us when he has more tell us when he gets more keep going keep going keep this i feel pretty good praise the lord i thank you for diane lord she said that she would know if she was healed and she says from the brain injury she said she would know and you said you feel pretty good tell them yeah i do i feel pretty good I can tell there's a little bit more to go, but I definitely feel better. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless your Lord. Financial provision. What? And diabetes. Who else? Anybody else diabetes? I've had a couple already. Yes, and we prayed for her. Yes. Thank you, Father. Healed. Total and completely healed. Oh, yes. How can I pray for you? I take authority over every blockage right now financially and as well as in your body I cancel right now every demonic assignment every spirit of thievery I command it to be removed right now every place of thievery goes right now I decree you're going to run. You're going to run without any pain. I thank you, Lord God, for healing, Lord God. The Achilles heal right now in the name of Jesus. Fire of the Lord. You might want to come this way a little bit just so we don't end up in Pastor James's lap. Increase the fire. Oh, 
us. Say, I thank you, Father, for financial increase over his life. I thank you for favor with insurance companies. I thank you that you give him wisdom, Lord God, when he speaks, and that he will know exactly what to say, because you're giving him wisdom, Lord God. Wisdom that comes from heaven. Heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom. How's he doing? He's got a little bit. Okay, a little bit. A little bit's good, but we're going to ask God for more. A little bit is good, but we're asking God for more. Beautiful name, Angelica. What's your name? Well, so this is your son. What do you think about what just happened? I'm sorry? It's going to be better. Come on over here. Come on over here. It's going to be better. Absolutely. This is his son. Come on over here, Angelica. Just stand right here. And this is our first time here. You can just face me. You don't face them. Um, so what do you think? Of, you said it's going to be better. That's what happened to him. He's going to finish because now he has Jesus. He's going to finish because God just entered into him. The Holy Spirit just entered into him. Yeah, and so he's going to finish, and he's going to finish with flying colors. And we decree that over him. Yes, and all doubt has to go, and all discouragement has to go. And every double play, every double mindedness, every place of double mindedness has to go. Is Jesus your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Is Jesus your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Amen. You know that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Because not because of your good works, but because of the cross and the blood that he shed for us. Amen. 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 I want to make sure. I want to make sure. Let me pray for you. So, Father, right now, I thank you for this couple. I thank you, Lord God, that they've come. They brought their son. And I know this is a, a thing that can cause worry. But at the name, in the same time, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over all worry. I command worry to leave right now. Leave off of the mother right now. In the name of Jesus, all worry leave right now. All fear go right now. Every place of disappointment goes right now. Lift your hands before the Lord. We're going to worship and praise him. Just lift your hands like this. What this is, is I surrender to you, Lord. I trust you with my son. I trust you with my life. Uh, Father, bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Oh, come on, church. Somebody get up and shout the name of Jesus. Somebody get up and shout the name of Jesus. We bless, we bless, we bless. Fill, fill him. Thank you, Lord. Every lie be broken off of him. Every lie, look at me. Every lie be broken off of him right now in the name of Jesus. Every place right now, critical, self-critical spirit be removed off of him right now. Every place where there's a self-critical spirit, I command that to go. I command it to be broken off of you right now. I want you to say, I repent and I renounce. You say it. I repent and I renounce of a critical, self-critical spirit. Say it. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Open your mouth and do it. Yes, you can. Stop playing with the enemy. Yes, you can. Open your mouth and bless yourself. Bless your spirit. You can. You can. The Holy Spirit through you will as you say yes are you ready to say yes or are you going to have stubbornness what's the yes for yes you're going to, you're ready or yes i'm going to have stubbornness <laughs> what yes he's ready oh praise god <laughs> you know we love you right huh you he says i can't love myself cuz you're not worthy a lie lie you know what it is the enemy that is telling you all of this no one is worthy it's only jesus that is worthy is he not in your heart 
Jesus, you know, I know you love him. And so he's the worthy one. And but because he's within you, now you are worthy in Christ. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. I decree the righteousness of God in you, upon you. You have the mind of Christ. That's who you are. That's who you are. I want you to say, I bless myself. I love myself. I choose to love myself today as an act of my will. Go ahead. As an act of my will. Speak it out as an act of my will. Out loud, I need to hear it. I choose. I choose. To love myself. To love myself. Say it again. To love myself. To love myself. I choose to love myself. Amen. Now, Father, I take authority over that spirit of judgment. I command the judgment, that ungodly judgmental spirit to be loosed off of him right now. Look up, look up, look up. To be loosed every place of, every place of torment, to be removed from him right now, off him now. Every place where his mind is just ransacked by lies, I command it to go right now. All of it. Hallelujah. Tell us what's going on now. What did the Lord just heal you of? Like what's changed? Do you need to stand up and check it? a lot more um, just general relief everywhere um, my, my knee still hurts really bad I'm kind of afraid to stand up but I'm going to try to stand up okay let's try to stand up I, I'm right here I'll hold your hand I command this knee to be healed joint to be healed so much better getting out. I don't feel the pain in your back anymore. I don't feel it Woo! no more pain in the back she can turn, she says. I'll be a safer driver. She'll be a safer driver. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. They're all praying for you. We're all praying for you. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. How about your knee? Let's walk and check it out. Tell us anything left, any pain left. You walk. <laughs> Is there any pain in your knee? No. No. Thank God to sit to me. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Woo. Can you stand behind some of these? Yeah. Amen. 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 Woo. Thank you, Father, for your divine protection over her. Thank you, Father, for your divine protection, your wisdom right now. I thank you, Lord God, all stress and all fear that's internalized has to go. I command right now every place where the enemy has brought fear and you have internalized it, I command it to go every witchcraft spirit coming against you be broken now off of her. In the name of Jesus, be broken off of her right now. Thank you, Lord. Fill, fill this mama, Lord God. Fill her up, oh God. Bless her. Do you want a chair? Would you like a chair? No. I'm oh, shh. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm good to go. Woo! I love it. She's good to go. That's a big no. I'm good to go. Who do you think you are, she says. There might be a few more people. I think she wants to prayer. Yeah. We've got somebody behind you. Just lift your hands up before the Lord. Father, every question that she has, I thank you that you are the answer. I thank you, Lord God, every question right now. You are the answer. Lord, I thank you for answering her questions. I command every place of confusion and fear and doubt to leave. As she gets the answers, because you're going to answer them, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that she's 100% in. Let her dive deep into the deep end. Let her dive deep into the deep end. Woo! What a beautiful service we've already had. People get baptized, got saved, people get saved, people get baptized, people getting healed, people getting delivered. Wow. We give you the honor and all the praise. Do you, are you up here for prayer? Yeah? Okay. Father, I thank you, wow, for this heart that just wants to serve you, sold out to Jesus. There was a day that you were running from God, and now you've been running to him. You've been running to him, and he sees every cry of your heart. You want so much more. You want so much more, and he says, I hear you. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged, because God is working it out, and he is allowing the process to be complete. We don't want any pre mature assignments released. God is working it out. God is doing it. God's timing is perfect. Isn't that true, church? God's timing is perfect. Sometimes we want what, what we think we want, but God has said, wait, be patient. Let me do the work in you first. It's good that you hunger, but don't get discouraged in the hunger. Amen? Fill her, Lord. Baptize her, Holy Ghost. So we just have about two more men. We have these two guys. Come on, Steve and Pastor Jeff. Um, Phil, can you come up and help catch? A 
Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just in case. I know that you don't normally go down, but still. Yeah. So I cancel the curse right now, coming against your body, coming against your family. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every assignment, every spirit of rebellion, every spirit that wants to come against the spirit of God in you. Every place where there's jealousy and there's word curses spoken over you by those that should know better, we cancel it right now. We decree it's null and void under our feet. We trample upon it right now. Woo, Father, I'm so glad we have a catcher behind you. Father, head it about send the bottle of Glory, glory, glory. Let the weight come off of him right now. Amen. The stress of his, on his body come off of him right now. Fire of God, destroy that thing. Wow. Yeah, and Maria, you might stay behind him. Just stay behind him. And how can I pray for you? Just more. Hallelujah. Just once more. Just once more. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fill him up. Woo, hallelujah. Fire. Glory. Wow. Anointing fall afresh upon you. Wow, there it is. That's why the men need catchers. <laughs> glory, glory. We glorify you, Abba. We glorify you, Abba. Wow, praise God. Can we all give God a just a round, just yes, glorify, praise him. Clap your hands. Thank you, Jesus. This is the spirit of the living God. It's not, not, a, not man, not a woman. Spirit of the living God. This is what you see. This is what's happening here. The power of God that's moving and displayed is the power of Jesus. I want you to say, I bless myself every day. I want you to say, I love myself every day. The more you do that, the more, more free you're going to be. Amen? Are you going to do it? Because I'm going to ask you next time. Okay? All right. God bless you. Yeah, you need prayer? Come on up. What do you need prayer for? Equilibrium. Okay, no more. No more. He's not going to lose his balance anymore. In the name of Jesus, Father, I take authority over whatever is causing him to have an equilibrium problem, and I command it to go right now. In the name of Jesus, I break every spell, everything that has been assigned to you, curses. I break the curses, every word curse spoken. I don't care where it came from. I command it to come off now. Father, I thank you healing lord god any fluid in the ear and the ears right now be dried up dried up cleared up cleared up you better catch him just in case cleared up hallelujah what a night already glory to god yeah let's give him praise yeah i'll take the podium Let's give him praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Wow, Lord. Thank you. You don't need to get up until you're ready, so there's no, no rush. Lord, we are in awe of what you do, and you do it every single time. We are in awe of your presence, God, and the power of the Lord, which is present to heal. We are in awe, Father God. You know, the Lord says that, you know, for those who seek the Lord, they shall lack no good thing. Those who seek the Lord, they shall lack no good thing. We've been seeking the Lord. My goodness. I just love when I see people in the glory. Look at Sherry. <laughs> Those, those who seek the Lord will not lack anything good. This is Psalm 3410. Those who seek the Lord, we seek you, Lord. You say we will not lack anything good. In other words, if it's good, we're seeking you. We're going to receive it. We're seeking you. We're going to get it all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba God. Psalm 3410. Thank you, Abba. Lord, I thank you for blessing this group. On fire group. This group that's on fire. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, the word says in Isaiah 60, arise and shine. And this is what's happened already tonight. Arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Tonight, what you've seen displayed is that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. How many of you would say, yeah, that's exactly what happened tonight. That's exactly. The, the word goes on and says, and it says, and deep darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise over you. See, even when you're in a situation where there's deep darkness around you, but the Lord will arise over you. I'm in Isaiah 60, if you're wondering where I am right now. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and verse and verse uh, 2, it says, The Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Lord will arise over you. It's not just the inside, but arise over you. And it says that the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. The glory of the Lord, God's incredible power, will be seen on your life. In other words, you're a beacon light, and God is continually to shine that bright light within you, brighter and brighter. And, and this is what's happening. We're becoming more and more radical in his presence, and we're seeing many, many more miracles. How many got healed tonight? Just wave your hand. Wave your hand. Kelly's going to stand up, and Kelly's going to just maybe stand up. If you got healed, maybe stand up, because she wants to take notice of who got, who got healed tonight. Yep, stand up. For some of you, it was a full healing, and for some of you, it was a partial healing. But you know what? It's still a healing, and we still give God the glory. And so Kelly takes testimonies. And you know, healing is not just physical body, although we are talking about that. But healing is also salvation. We had people that got saved. You gave your life to Jesus. People that got baptized, you know that's a healing too. Glory to God. Deliverance, that's a healing too. You know what the word saved means? It means sozo. The word saved means sozo, which means completely healed. That means that you are completely healed. That means you're saved, you're healed, and you're delivered. See, God thought about the whole thing. It wasn't just one section of your life. You know, God wants us to live holy. And I don't, and holy with an H, but holy with a W. He wants us to live holy for Him. In other words, completely whole mind, body, soul, and spirit, but also holy, right, according to his word. And this is what's happening here every time that we meet, every time we gather. So we give you praise, Father, for the testimonies that came about here tonight. So, so happy, so grateful, Lord God. We're so grateful, Father. Hallelujah. So now we're going to prepare for the word of God. And so, Father, we thank you for the word. As your people, Lord, have come tonight, and, and Lord, as they, they've been a part of worship, they've seen your power move, they've been in the glory, they got healed, you know, that you use, Father God, um, as a vessel of, of your glory and honor. So, Father, now I'm asking that as the word is, is brought forth, that, Lord, you would use me, you would speak through me, Father God, that I'm completely yielded to you, and that, Holy Spirit, you would just speak through me, have your way tonight, give me your mind, Lord, I have your mind. And I submit myself to you. And I thank you, Father, that the word of God will come forth. And the ears that are here, they're going to hear. Lord, they're going to hear because you're, you're calling them. You're drawing them. You're, you're enabling them to hear everything they need to hear, Father God. And they're going to change and they're going to leave changed. They're going to leave whole. They're going to leave, Father, healed and on fire. And they're going to leave with hope and tools to help them throughout the week. So I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we all prayed and said, amen. amen. Glory to God. In, in Matthew 12, 34, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. And this is Matthew 12, 34. If it came out of your mouth, then it's in your heart. Whatever comes out of our mouth is actually already in our heart. Is that not true, church of God? Yeah, whatever comes out of our mouth, it's because it was actually already in our heart. Now, that could be good and that could be bad, right? So the good things, they come out of your mouth, but they were also in your heart. If there's anything bad and it came out of your mouth, then you know what? It was also in your heart. But just say, tonight is a night of impartation. Tonight is a night of impartation. Tonight is a night of change. I commit myself to be changed in the glory and in the likeness of my, of my Lord. Amen. So the only word, meaning the word of God, that you know, truly know, is the word that you use, is the word that you walk in. It's not just the word that you know that you have memorized, but it's the word that you walk in. It's the word that you really believe. I've been talking to you about this for the last few weeks. Amen? Because I'm drilling this, and I want to drill it home. I want us to really walk in this concept. That's why I keep on repeating something, or, or at least start talking about it in a different light, but it's still, the concept is, it's the word that you really know is the word that you actually walk in. It's the word that you use, right? 
So knowing the word means walking in the word, not just memorizing it. Believing the word is a shield and confessing the word is a sword, right? See, the devil can't talk. The devil cannot talk without you. In other words, you have to give him your mouth. You actually have to, you have to actually open up your mouth. The devil can't talk without you giving him your words. He actually can't speak unless you let him speak through you. When you yield to the, to the enemy, what happens is, is that you're allowing him to speak through you. He can't speak unless you let, you let him. See, we've got to put a guard over our mouth. We've got to put a guard over our heart. But we've got to put a guard over our mouth. And as we do that, your speech will be less. You'll talk less. For some of you, you're going to talk a lot less. Because you're going to realize, hmm, I want every thought, before the word is spoken, I want every thought to be filtered through Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the devil cannot talk without you, right? Stop giving him a voice. Say, I'm going to stop giving him a voice. I'm not going to let him talk through me anymore. anymore. So let's just take doubt and um, unbelief. When we speak doubt and unbelief, we're giving voice to the devil. We're allowing the devil to speak through us, to get our hearts, to grip our hearts, right? Our sword, which is supposed to come out of our mouth, and our shield, which is our, in our heart, what we believe, our, our shield can get stronger and thicker. We're going to talk about our shield here today, all right? So I'm going to turn to Ephesians 6, and if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Ephesians 6. I'm going to read to you the chapter first of Ephesians 6, or at least most of it, because it talks about putting on the armor of God. We're going to start in verse 10, though, talking about putting on the whole armor of God. So Ephesians 6, and starting in verse 10, it says, finally, my brother, be strong in the schemes of the devil. Put on the armor of God. That's our instruction, right? Then it goes in verse 12, it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against one another. We know that, but against powers and principalities, against spiritual rulers in the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are, the battle is a spiritual battle. Say it's a spiritual battle. Stop fighting against your spouse. I'm going to stop fighting. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Uh, starts telling us about the armor. Starts telling us what the armor is. It's full of peace. So we just listed all these different parts of the armor, right? But look at verse 16, because in the morning, they'll say, I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I put on the belt of truth. I put on the gospel shoes of peace. And they think they've put on the armor of God. They did not. They went through a little ritual that maybe they learned when they were in Sunday school at some point in time, but that's not really putting on the armor of God. That's not really what it means. What we need is a revelation of what this means. What we need is how do we really fully arm, allow ourselves to be armed, fully armed, clothed with the armor of God? Because, you know, I can say, I put on, I put on, you know, and, I, you know, and unless I have a revelation of what this really means, it's not going to do me any good. Look at this next verse, because it says, above all, above all, he says, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay, right there, the shield of faith. It says, with the shield, you're going to quench. With the shield, you're going to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. I'm going to continue to read before we talk about that shield. Verse 17. And then it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer. See, people stop right there. They go, okay, I read the whole thing. No, you didn't. Keep on reading. Keep on. Look at what verse 18 says. It says to pray always. You can sit there and put on the helmet of salvation. But unless you're praying always with all kinds of prayers in the spirit, being watchful, being watchful, it says to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, it says here, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel 
for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's go back to verse 16. Above all, after he lists all these different armor, pieces of armor, he says, above all, take the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Well, your shield, sometimes in the Bible, shield is also referred to as a buckler. Your shield and your buckler. It's the same word. And, it, and a shield is to protect your body, at least for Roman soldiers in, in Roman times, they would protect their body from the fiery darts, right? Fiery darts were weapons that were launched against them to literally just kill them right? And so, but if they had their, their armor on, then the fiery dart would not be able to penetrate. Now, we're not walking around with this type of weaponry on the outside, but it's still a spiritual armor that we need to put on because the fiery darts are still being launched our way. But we have to understand how to really combat this and how to walk in this. Amen? And my prayer is that tonight, you're going to have revelation. Amen. So, I went through and I looked up some scriptures on the, the, on the shield, and I'm going to just quickly read them to you. Genesis 15, verse 1. Genesis 15, verse 1, it says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Do not be afraid. I am your shield. Number one, we see that the Lord is our shield, but he tells us not to be afraid. Okay, so we understand that the Lord is the shield. I want you to put your, your name in there. Do not be afraid, Gabby. Do not be afraid, Michael. I want you to put your name in there. S speak it out loud. Do not be afraid. Speak your name. I, the Lord God, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. He is not just your shield. He is not just your reward. He is your exceedingly great reward. That's a promise, Marie, that he is a, he's exceedingly great. The shield that he is about us, he says, I want to be your exceedingly great reward, much, much more than just a reward. So we see that in Genesis 15, 1, he tells us not to be afraid because he's our shield, and it's a shield that has a promise attached to it. The promise is to have a great reward. 2 Samuel 22, 3. 2 Samuel 22, 3. You can write these down. You can open up your Bible. That would be great. No, we'll put the scriptures up. Again. God is my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. The shield is your is your forward shield. Shield. Mm. So he's he's your stronghold and your refuge, your savior, and he saves us from violence. These are promises that we. Verse thirty one. As for God, His way is perfect. He's putting the word in my spirit that now I get a revelation of that word, and when I walk around, I literally walk around with the shield of God's glory. There's a shield of God's glory. You know, glory, and we have, we experience the glory of God in this room all the time. And I would assume you also do on your own time of prayer and such. There are times where you release the glory of God, the shield of God, a cloud. Moses talked about the cloud of glory and the, the same, right? So the shield of glory, now remember, we're talking about the shield and the armor of God, right? I want to, I want you to see the parallels. In Ephesians chapter 6, we are told that with the shield, we're going to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. But I told you, you need a revelation of how to put that armor on, right? So in the Old Testament, we hear about the glory of God being like a shield all around us, right? And the glory of God is something that grows. The glory of God, is, it grows as you stay in the word and as the word becomes so real to you that it becomes what you know. Remember, it's the word that you relation to you. Nobody's going to be able to change your mind because you know, you know God, you know the word, you know it works, and you work the word, and the word works you, right? And so the glory of God starts to, because it's a shield and it's all around you, it starts to become thicker. It becomes thicker. Your shield, actually like your armor, becomes stronger, right? There are areas in your life that you already have a very strong shield. I would assume for many of you here in this room, there are areas in your life that you, your shield is strong and you never doubt, you know, the Lord's word in that, in that area. Let's take salvation. For many of you, you know that you know that you are saved. You have an assurance of your salvation. You don't wonder if you're going to wake up and go to hell. You know that you're saved. It's not an area that the enemy can even to torment you, right? Is that not true? In that area, your, your shield is strong. It's thick because the word of God has been, you put the word of God in there and you know without a doubt that 
when you die, you're going to heaven. You have an assurance of your salvation, right? For many of us in this room, we know that we know sickness is not from God. We will not tolerate sickness. We don't accept it as God's way of trying to speak to you. We don't accept it as God's punishment for you, right? That's a lie. And so for many of us in this room, we know that when we see sickness, it does not come from God. It is not God trying to teach you a lesson. We know that God is actually the healer. Jehovah Rapha is his name. God doesn't have, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have dementia. He doesn't, he doesn't, he is not, you know, psychotic. He's not today here and here tomorrow. He's over there all over the place. What he says, he says, and what he means, he means, right? And so his word says, I am your healer, Jehovah Rapha, my body. We know the word of God. There is in that area, for many of you, there's no question about what the will of God is. Your sword is strong. It's thick. You know there are different levels of thickness, even in a natural shield, right? You can have a really thin shield, or you can have a thicker shield. The shield is thick when you put the word on it. The more word, the thicker it gets. The less word, right? The, the thinner your shield becomes. And so what happens? The thinner the shield becomes, the more ability the enemy can send his fiery dart. The more ability that the enemy can send his fiery dart and find a place to, to, to penetrate. But what's glory? Think about glory. In Old Testament, talks about the glory of God. The clouds came down, and it just literally saturated. There's water. I've experienced this many times. The glory of God, like liquid love. And, and literally like just a cloud all around me. And I saw it with my own eyes. And I knew that I was being cocooned. I knew that I knew that the glory of God was all around me. I was literally in a bubble. In a bubble. You know those memories, and not memories, those visions that you have with the Lord, they stay with you. God is teaching you something from his word. This is all biblical. He's teaching you something from his word. But this vision that I had, I literally saw myself enclosed in the glory of God, but it was the cloud of his glory. It was like, and what are clouds? But moisture, water, right? But look at what the word says. What happens with, this, with the shield in, in um, Ephesians, right? He sends forth fiery shields, fiery shields. What does the enemy send? Fiery shields. But if you're walking in a cloud of glory because you've put the word on it and the word is so strong in you, when the fiery darts are sent to you, they meet water. They meet the glory. When it meets the water, when it meets the glory, it gets quenched. It gets put out. The importance of us really walking with that shield all around us. If you don't know what the will of God is in a certain area of life, get the word on it. When you get the word on it, you are getting the glory realm of God all around you. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper because the word will protect you. People just want to live, you know, in a place of emotionalism. Well, I just want to pray. I just want to speak in tongues. That's great, and there's a place for it. And you see we operate in all that, of course. But unless you are training the members of your body to really stand on the word of God and let that word go forth, you're not building that sword and that shield, I mean. That shield is not being thickened, and it needs to be thickened. Because the enemy would take advantage when you don't. Does anybody, did anybody get a revelation here today already of what the of what that shield is supposed to do. You know, because let's think, let's, let's face it, you know, elementary school, we, or, you know, we put on the helmet and we go through the song and you put on the belt and you put on, and it's cute, but then you don't, it doesn't strengthen you any more than you did before you sang that little song, right? And you go all throughout every day, every year, and you're thinking, why isn't the armor, I put the armor on, you know, but two minutes later, it's like I didn't do it. Well, it's not this ritualistic little song that you go through, but it's an understanding that my mind is the mind of Christ. You're going to get indignant. You're going to get militant about this. I have the mind of Christ. I just put on the helmet of salvation. I didn't say I put the helmet of salvation on. I just spoke to my mind. I spoke the word of God over my mind. I just put on the helmet of salvation. 
You know, I have the, the breastplate of righteousness, God's righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I just put on, I just put on the breastplate of righteousness. It's the word that you're going to put on you. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says to clothe yourself in Christ. Are we clothing ourselves? If I clothe myself in Christ, then I'm literally clothing myself in the word. And you know the thing about that? It's not just an external clothing. It's an internal clothing. It's external, but it's internal. It's both. It's the cloud that's out here, and it's the glory that's also in here. And you walk as a sanctified saint. You walk as one that is so sold out. You know, hey, let me tell you, it's not that, you know, the enemy just, just stops trying. But you just have tools, and you know how to combat him every single time. Amen? You're getting strong. Say, I'm getting strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm going to quickly give you these other scriptures, and they're about the shield because I just want you to write them down. So Psalms uh, 3, 3. It says, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I love that because he's the lifter of your head. He's shielding you. You know, the enemy wants to put condemnation. He wants to put, you know, discouragement and doubt and disbelief and everything else. But you know what? The Lord says, I'm the lifter of your head. As a matter of fact, I'm covering you with the shield, and that shield is going to lift up your head. Say, no more shame. I'm not walking in shame. He's the lifter of my head. That scripture, you speak it out loud, your spirit starts to rise up starts to grow. Psalm 512, it says, for you, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Shield with favor. Say, I'm surrounded with favor. You are surrounded with favor as with a shield. Notice how it says surrounded. Let's look at that again. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. God is your forward guard, and he's your rear guard. He's your rear guard, and he's your forward guard. With favor, he is surrounding you. Everywhere you go, you're walking in the favor of God. How do I know that? Because I just put the word on it. I put the word on my life. I spoke it. Speak it over your life. The word does not return void. God is not a man that he should lie. His word does not return unto us void. So who has to do this, though? We do. We need to do this. Right? So it takes, it takes discipline. It really takes discipline. But the more that you start doing this and disciplining your life to do this, the stronger that you get and the faster you see the acceleration. Like at first it might seem a little hard, but as you do it more and more and more, you will see the acceleration. The Holy Spirit will lead and help you absolutely because it's his will. But we have to step out and be diligent and we have to be um, disciplined to do what he's called us to do. This is really truly putting on the armor. This is truly how to do it. And uh, Psalm 91, sorry, Psalm 91, 4. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. His truth is your shield. What is the shield? His truth is the shield. That means the shield is the word. And I've been telling you that the whole night. The shield is the word. The more word you put on a situation, the stronger you become, the less and less and less will the enemy be allowed to fire those fiery darts against you and actually succeed. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So wherever you have no knowledge of a certain topic, you have no shield. And we know that Hosea 4, 6 says that we are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. But say, that's not going to be me. Because I got the word of God and I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it so much that the word of God is now in me. Say, the word of God is now in me. And every day, I'm going to be faithful to put the word of God in me every day every day hallelujah so where you have little knowledge little knowledge of the word you have you have a weak shield wherever you have little knowledge you know but wherever you have a lot of knowledge of the word then you're going to have a strong shield and your shield will grow as you as you put the word on it. So I was thinking about that, and I thought, let's see, like a practical example, you know. Um, there's a scripture in 1 John, 1 John 3. You can write this down. 1 John 3, verse 21 and 22. 1 John 3, 21, 22. And it says this. If our hearts, 
If our heart does not condemn us, I want you to hear this word. This is going to help somebody. Say it's going to help somebody. Say it's going to help me. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. That whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. Let's go back to 21. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. So what happens is when our heart condemns us, we lack confidence towards God. When we lack confidence towards God, go back to verse 22, our prayers are not answered. Whatever we ask, we receive from him when our hearts do not condemn us. Do you see that? Whatever we ask, we receive from him. The verse before that, verse 21, said when our hearts don't condemn us. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. Go to the next scripture. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because our hearts didn't condemn us. But the problem is, is that many people live in a place of condemnation. Their hearts condemn them. Therefore, then they don't have the confidence to approach God. And they don't ask as they should. And they wonder why they don't receive as they should, because their hearts are condemning them. But what they should do is learn what we just went over today, what you now know, which is in, in uh, 1 John 1, 9, maybe we can put up 1 John 1, 9, because it says this, and this is true for every single one of you, and it is true no matter what you do. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. He forgives and he cleanses when we confess. What the enemy wants you to do is just beat you up. He wants you to beat yourself up. He wants you to stay in condemnation and guilt and shame. And he doesn't want you to get past that so that you could sit there and sulk in your misery. Your heart condemns you. You don't have confidence towards God. You don't even bother asking. Or if you do ask something from the Lord, you ask in such a sheepish way without any faith that you don't really receive half of what you could be receiving simply because you didn't allow the shield of faith, uh, which is what? I just read it to you, 1 John 1, 9. Oh, I'm going to confess my sins. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive and to cleanse of all unrighteousness, right? See how simple this is? But you've got to do it. We must do this. See, fiery darts can enter. What's a fiery dart? Guilt, shame, condemnation. That's a fiery dart. But if you have more word on your heart and on your spirit, and you say, oh, no, I'm not going to allow unconfessed sin. I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to allow uh, guilt and shame. I'm not going to allow condemnation. I'm not going to allow this to remain within me. And if it's there, I'm going to confess it as sin. When it's confessed as sin, the fiery dart has just met the glory and it gets quenched. Amen. It totally gets quenched. He, the enemy loses his grip. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're going to thicken our shield by getting the word in our heart. And we're not going to allow the enemy to condemn us. And whenever you do feel condemned, you're going to say, I'm going to find the word of God. I'm going to repent. It's the word of God, which is literally Jesus. Amen. Isn't that crazy? It's literally the living word is within me. The living word lives on the inside of you. And the living word knows exactly how to combat the assignments of the enemy that come against you. Wherever you go, gosh, I just feel like I'm in this fog. You know, that, that state of being in a fog, it doesn't come from the Lord. Confusion, I would call that confusion. Confusion doesn't come from the Lord. Tell that confusion to get out. You have the authority to do it. Amen. All authority, God says, I have given unto you. All authority. To trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing but shall by any means harm you. Luke 10, 19, right? So all authority. So you have authority to command that state of confusion to leave your mind, to leave your family, to leave your household. Doubt, fear. What about fear? God has not given you a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. Anytime you feel fear. What is fear? Intimidation. He's a liar. Fear is a liar. Intimidation. Fear is intimidation. Fear, fear, fear is also timidity. Fear is, people call it anxiety, right? It's all fear. It is all fear. And it does not come from God, but it's there to rob you. It's there to rob you of God's confidence. But 
That's not who you are. You're not going to be robbed of God's confidence because the confidence that God wants to give us is like the righteousness of God. The righteous are as bold as a lion. The Bible says the righteous are as bold. You are as bold as a lion. I'm going to have you stand up right now. Say, I'm as bold as a lion. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm as bold as a lion. The wicked, they run, though no one's chasing, but the righteous are as bold, as bold as a lion. Father, teach me to put the word of God within me. Lord, teach me how to increase my shield, how to thicken my shield by putting the word on it. When I put the word on it, every fiery dart is quenched, has to be quenched because the word, which is like water, the word, which is like water, it just increases within me. Come on, the rock, and he struck the rock, and the water came from the rock. But who is the rock? But Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. He's also the water, the water of life. We need to put the water on it by putting the word on it. We get washed by the water of the word. Is that not true? Amen. So, Father, I thank you for the revelation that came forth tonight. I thank you that they're strong. They're strong in the Lord and the power of your might, Father God. I thank you that what you did, the salvations tonight, healings, deliverances, God, we give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Yes, praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name and all of God's children said... Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And can I get my ushers to come forth, please? We are going to do our tithes and our offering now. Hallelujah. So quickly, I'm just going to give you a couple of scriptures on tithes and offerings. And before I do that, I want to, I want to draw your attention right now to ways that you can give. If you want to make a check out, House of Glory, make checks out to House of Glory. If you're giving by cash or by credit card, there are envelopes on the back of the chairs. You can fill out the envelope if you like and write legibly, please. Um, you can also go to our websites. We have two of them. They're, it's all the same. They're listed right there, houseofglorychurch.org or kathycapola.org. It's one and the same. So you can go to, to either one of those, and you can give that way as well. Hallelujah. There's long envelopes too, and those are for our building funds. If you're wondering what the long envelope is for, um, we are believing God for our own building, and so and and uh, God is faithful, and we're on our way. Thank you, Jesus. We are on our way to to getting our own building, and so and God's timing will be perfect. But if the Lord puts it on your spirit to um, to give to the building fund, then you can of course use that envelope. I want to give you. Um, um, a scripture or two, and it says here, Paul in speaking, and this is Acts 20, verse 35, in speaking of what Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, he says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed when we give, we are more blessed when we give than when we receive. And in, Math, in Matthew 6, 19, starting in verse 19, it says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal, for wherever your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word. Father, I thank you that the word is so alive and it's, allowed, it's alive in us. Father, we want our treasures, Lord, to be stored up in heaven. So, Father God, we want our hearts, Lord God, to be so intertwined with the treasures of heaven that we would not allow the world's standards to cause us to walk in compromise. Father, your people have come, and what you tell them to give today is what they will give. Lord, they're giving not unto man or woman, but unto the kingdom of God, and they're doing so out of obedience because that is the will of God. So some are giving of their tithes tonight, and some are giving of their offerings tonight. Father, and some are giving a seed like a love offering. I thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to each and every one of them exactly what you have called them to give tonight. By the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would draw their attention right now to doing exactly what you've called them to do. Lord, your word says you love a hilarious giver. So I thank you, Father. In faith we give, and Lord God, we can never, ever, ever outgive God. We never can outgive you because you're going to give back, pour back into their lap, Father God, in exceedingly abundantly above and beyond amount, Father God. You said, trust me in this. We trust you in this. 
Father, in the art of giving. We trust you in this. In the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's children said, amen. You may pass out the, um, the baskets. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And as the baskets are being passed out, we can, um, we can, sh we can lower that or we can shut that right now. Um, I I'm going to do one more thing and I'm going to then have Pastor Melissa come up in a moment. She's going to give us some announcements. But I want to do one more thing. And I want to pray for some of you that need a job. Some of you need a job. Some of you really need a job, like you don't have one or you, or you need a better job. <laughs> I see some hands going, me, I need a better job. The finances are low. Okay, so um, if that's you, you don't have to stand, but if you want, certainly you can, but God knows who you are. So Father, I thank you for the jobs that are needed in this room. Father, I thank you right now. We are decreeing, Father, in, for every single one of them, those that need jobs and those that need a financial increase. Father, I thank you for the finances. Lord, we know that you have the cattle on a thousand hills and that we, Lord, serve a powerful, powerful God that's not poor, but wealthy. So, Lord, I thank you for providing for your children. We're asking, our hearts are not condemning us. So, therefore, we have confidence to approach a holy God. And when we approach a holy God with confidence, we know that we have what we've asked. I decree jobs. I decree good jobs. I decree good paying jobs. Come to them. Father, I thank you that all their bills are paid. I thank you that debt is paid. Debt cancellation. Canceling debt in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory, 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 glory to the living God. And some are alone, and they want, you're never really alone, but they want, yeah, a spouse. He wants a godly wife is what he meant. I knew what you meant. He wants a godly wife. Say yes. <laughs> okay. Some need a, some want and believe God is going to bring a spouse. So, and of course, that would be a godly spouse. One that is, you are equally yoked. Again, I'm not going to ask you to stand, but if that's you, I mean, you can stand if you want, but if that's you, we already know you want one. <laughs> not just anyone. Okay, there we go. So, Father, I thank you that you have, Lord, a match made in heaven. Uh, Lord, I, I'm asking, Lord God, I, you know, I'm asking that you would bring the right person at the right time. Lord, I thank you, Father, for godly relationships, godly spouses. That's what we're asking for. Father God, that they would be like-minded, that they would grow together, Lord God, that they would live their lives, Father, in unity, Lord, that they would have a companion the rest of their lives. I know they're laughing and everything, but I'm seriously praying, you guys. Listen up. And so that they'd have somebody that they would, um, that they would be able to share life with, a companion, a companion, Father God. I notice that some of you are single, and you are not standing, and you are not lifting your hand, and that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> not everybody's ready. Um, that's important that you know that, right? So, Lord, I thank you, matches, Lord God, that you have in heaven, Lord God, that you bring those people in at the right time. And if there is a mentality of I'm waiting for somebody that I know it was God, and if it's not you, we take authority over any lying spirit and we cancel it. And that, Father, you would be able to speak to them and they would know exactly what you're calling them to do, who they're called to be with, without any deception. So I thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. All right. Thank you. Um, you can, yeah, you can just bring the, um, you can bring the offering and the tithes up here and we'll stretch out our hands right now. We'll stretch out our hands to the tithes and to the offerings. Father, we thank you for the multiplication. We thank you that you're multiplying. You're multiplying, Lord, not just what's in here, but you're multiplying it out there. You're multiplying, just like the loaves and the fishes, you're multiplying it. Lord, that many will be fed. They're, they'll be fed the word of God all throughout the nations. I thank you for what you're doing through this church to the, to the many nations. In Jesus' name, amen.